Welcome to Bet On It. NFL preseason is underway, so that means we are back. Kelly Stewart here, joined by Marco D'Angelo. And a special guest for these NFL preview shows, our good friend Teddy Covers. Today we're going to be previewing the AFC. We'll be back next week with the mm. NFC. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on all of the social channels at Wager Talk. Marco D'Angelo, we're going to get right into this. We're going to hit the AFC East, the AFC West, and then uh, we're going to check out our good friend Ralph and, of course, Andy for some props. We're going to see we can't maybe find some best bets for you guys here at the end of the show in regards to the AFC. But Marco, let's talk AFC East right now. We have three teams essentially sitting at the top of the rankings. Uh, we've got the Bills, we've got the Jets, and we've got the Dolphins. And then, of course, we've got the Patriots. Uh, I've seen as high as, you know, plus 2,500 to win this division. <laughs> so I have a feeling we're not, we don't have a, not, a lot of nice things to say about them, but we'll see what we can find here. Marco, who is the team that's going to win this division? And uh, give me your full synopsis on them. Well, Kelly, this is the second best division in football. I feel this year we'll talk about the best one in a little bit. But you look at the Buffalo Bills and, you know, every year they're the team that's going to be the favorite. But we might have the changing of the guard this year. Last year, the Buffalo Bills restocked and built that team to try to beat Kansas City. And they almost didn't even make the playoffs. They did make the playoffs. But once again, it was the Buffalo uh, nemesis, the Kansas City Chiefs, that stopped their season. I look for the Buffalo Bills to have a step back this year. I think this division is the three-headed uh, monster with the Jets and Miami. But I think the team that is going to emerge out of the AFC East, yes, I'm going to drink the Kool-Aid, and I'm going to go with the New York Jets here. If Aaron Rodgers stays upright for the entire season, they are the team to beat, and they are the most complete roster in the AFC East. They went out and beefed up the offensive line. Uh, the defense last year kept them in games. And remember, <laughs> the quarterback situation last year, it was ugly. And whenever you don't stay on the field offensively, that puts even more wear and tear on the defense, and they still held up strong. If Aaron Rodgers gives them anything this year, this is a legit Super Bowl team. I'm going to make two plays in the AFC East. I'm going to take the Jets to win the division, and I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills under 10 and a half wins. Wow. I did not expect Jet Hater from the last couple of seasons. Well, Marco and I were both Jets haters, but that's okay. To come in, dropping bombs before the NFL season even started, Marco is drinking that Jets Kool-Aid Teddy Covers. What's your favorite flavor of Kool-Aid? <laughs> Probably grape, I think, but I, I don't drink a lot of Kool-Aid lately. Uh, I tend not to be drinking the Kool-Aid when it comes to teams like the Jets, but I'm going to come back to the Jets when it comes to best bets at the end of the show. And I certainly wouldn't argue with Marco's concept of the Jets being a team that we might want to have some money on as opposed to money against. I'm going to look at Buffalo and Miami just because Marco talked about a lot about the Jets a, a moment ago. So we talked about the Bills. This is a team has been a top five offense the last four years. They've been a top 10 defense in both points and yards in each of the last five years. They were number three in the NFL in takeaways last year. We look at those kind of stats and the statistical profile for Buffalo. There's only one way for this team to go. And that's down. So I'm with Marco conceptually. We talk about a best bet for the AFC East segment. Buffalo not to make the playoffs certainly stands out to me. Marco already gave you the under. Uh, I'll give you a Buffalo not to make the postseason at all. I do think the Bills take a step back this year. Miami's a nice little wild card. You know, I would not sell the Dolphins short. And they're a team that had major defensive injuries last year. They look to be a lot healthier on that side of the football right now. We know what the offense is capable of doing. You know, big plays galore, the running game compliments, the passing game. They can score points in bunches. If Miami can get stops and put pressure on opposing quarterbacks, something they struggled to do for extended stretches last year, I would not be surprised at all to see Miami very live in this division race. But to me, Buffalo, no playoffs is one that makes a lot of sense. Let's not forget, with the Bills, last thing I'm going to say about them, they have a stretch from late October to Christmas, basically. They got three home games for a two-month span against Miami, KC, San Francisco. That's the three home games. Not a lot of easy games for Buffalo. 
or extended stretches this season. I don't expect the postseason. Kelly? Ooh, Teddy and Marco both selling <laughs> on the Buffalo Bills. I'm going to have, uh, I, I can't wait to see the comments. They're going to be losing their minds. Let me get these AFC West odds open. And of course, we know who sits at the top. Those Kansas City Chiefs right in second there. The Los Angeles Chargers with new head coach Harbaugh. We're going to see what he's able to do. Then the Raiders and the hometowns of us three. And of course, the Denver Broncos, who I'm at this point um, thinking I should take that helmet over my left shoulder and just throw it on the other side of the room. Teddy, I'm going to go to you first here. Uh, let's start off with my said Broncos. Uh, Bo Nix, eh, he looked all right in a preseason game, and now we have Bo Leave signs all over the place. Okay, so let's start with this. When you want to talk about overreactions, week one of the – I saw Bo Nix is the best quarterback ever to play, and every other rookie is the best quarterback I've ever seen. Oh, my God, they were so good against teams that aren't blitzing and are playing vanilla defenses in the four snaps that we saw them. People love to overreact to what they just saw. Bo Nix looked pretty good against Colts fourth string defenders in a, in, a, in a game where Indy didn't blitz and didn't have any defensive game plan. That does not make Denver a bet on team moving forward. It really does. Look, it's Kansas City's division. It's been Kansas City's division. All the metrics and the personnel show that Kansas City is very much the team to beat. And of the other three teams, I'm not enamored with any of them. All right. If there's one that stands out to me right now, you want to talk about maybe a season win bet, Raiders over is one that has piqued my interest in recent weeks. This is a defense, again, people like Antonio Pierce, they don't know anything about it. The players have bought into Antonio Pierce, plain and simple. All right, He's a player's coach, and they've bought into what he's doing, which hasn't been the case for most recent Raiders coaches. So you have a team that's bought in. Defensively, they were solid last year. They look good on paper this year. Offensively, Gardner Minshew, all he's done everywhere he's been, dating back to Washington State, is overachieve. All right? And if Aiden O'Connell wins the job, he'll be hurt in a week, and we'll see Minshew anyway. Uh, but I think the Raiders are liver than they've been. I think they're a 500-level team. I like Vegas over, which he's doing over. Marco, do you feel the same about that hometown team, the Raiders? Because here's the reality. I'm down on the Chiefs last year, and they scramble to win a few games. They falter in Denver because maybe Mahomes had the flu. But at the end of the day, this team is still the best team in the AFC West. I'm not saying I want to lay it with them, but is there any value in maybe the Chargers or the Raiders to win this division? Well, I'm not as high on the Raiders as Teddy is in uh, two things. You know, Garner Minshew, there is no question, everywhere he's been, He's been a great backup, okay? But if he wins the starting job and it's his team, he has not yet shown me that he can make a team his and take him to the playoffs and be successful. And I have to have the second year. I want to see it. They had the, um, the jump, the spark, whatever you want to call it, when Antonio Pierce took over the team. Why? <laughs> because the players absolutely hated Josh McDaniels. They did not want to play for him. He lost the locker room, and it was a breath of fresh air. They got the guy they wanted, Antonio Pierce. They played hard for him for the rest of the season last year, and it got him the head coaching job. Now we got to see what he does a full year and if the team still has that chemistry that they had last year. And if it's not Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Donnell hasn't shown me any, or O'Connell, excuse me, hasn't shown me anything to tell me he's an NFL caliber quarterback. So those are my concerns there. The rest of the division, Denver, okay, that roster's not good. Sean Payton's blowing it up and rebuilding it, all right? And, you know, he's got the pressure on him because let's face it, last year, as soon as he got to Denver, he made some remarks about the former head coach, uh, Nathaniel Hackett, uh, which – <laughs> really wasn't kind, but you know, he didn't do a great job either. He started the season at one and five last year. Then he ran Russell Wilson out of town. Uh, when they had a chance to make the playoffs, you know, slim after the one and five start last year, but they got it rolling uh, until the final four weeks of the season. And then they sat Russell Wilson the last couple games. He's got to do it this year and rebuild. He's got a rookie quarterback that looked good after one game, but I'm not getting 
uh, overly excited there. And speaking of not getting overly excited, I'm not going to buy all the Harbaugh hype either. New coach generally is going to take uh, you know a year or two to turn the program around. It will be better because you know, Kelly, from all the shows we did together, I definitely was not a Brandon Staley fan, and uh, I'm happy to see him go. So where does that leave us? It leaves us with Kansas City. And, yeah, they're the heavy chalk. Do I want to lay them to win a division even though it's almost like a free square? No, I'm not going to lay that price. But if I'm going to play anything with Kansas City, I'm going to take them to get to the Super Bowl again. I'm not win it. But get there just to win the AFC conference. And I'm seeing that around plus 340. And here's why. Do I think they are the best team in the AFC this year? No, I don't. I think there's a couple teams that are better. But here's why I like Kansas City. Because the other two divisions that have where I think the best teams are, are so competitive, those divisions, those teams are going to beat up on one another. And I see Kansas City rolling uh, through their schedule with a softer schedule and a softer division. They're going to get the wins in the AFC West. They can end up with home field advantage by default. And we know going to Kansas City with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes in playoff time, and you get one of those cold weather games, uh, and if we get a team like Miami or such that ends up having to come there, we know what happens. I'm going to go ahead and take it. Kansas City at plus money, a nice price to take a shot with the boys that know how to get it done, Mr. Reed and Mr. Mahomes. Don't blame you there, Marco. And if you're new to the show, you don't know what these glasses mean. But if you have watched us for the last couple of years, it means it's time for some TNA with the stat daddy himself, Ralph Michaels. Ralph has brought us a couple of nerd charts. Oh, boy, Ralph's got nerd glasses on, you guys. I'm so excited. Oh, Ralph. What have you got for us for this NFL season? Need some actionable info that's going to last for at least a few weeks. You know what the sad thing is, Kelly? I finally reached the time where I cannot read the Phil Steele college football preview without some few reading glasses. So the six point finally caught up to me. So I did have to get some reading glasses for the first time in my life. Um, you know, we're going to start this TNA segment, Kelly, with something simple. And guys, remember this. There are times we are going to have wow ATS records on systems and trends. It's always as important to know situations that are maybe 50% that you don't put too much weight on them or look to play against them. The first thing we're going to start is back-to-back -back home games in the NFL, and this is without a buy. So you're playing home games back-to-back -back weeks. I'm going to say, Kelly, if we go to a bar – Seven or eight out of 10 people would say, oh, if I have an NFL team at home in back-to-back -back weeks, that's a positive. Fair statement? So let's take yeah. a look at the chart. We're going to show, we're going to show the last five years. Now, last year teams in the second of back-to-back -back home games actually went 55% against the spread, but they went 43.5% two years ago, 50.7%. 55.2 and 42.9. So in the last five years, teams on the second of back-to-back -back home games are actually 49.6%. Now that doesn't mean you can't play them, but do not give that team extra weight because you think it's a situational edge. I also ran a couple subsets on the bottom. If the team lost the first game as a home favorite and they're playing at home again the next week, they're 33 and 33, 50%. So again, no added value. If they're playing a division foe in that second straight home game, only 45.2% against the spread. And our next chart is going to be back-to-back -back road games. Take a look at the very bottom, Kel. NFL teams playing their second straight home game against an NFL team playing their second straight road game, 46.9% against the spread. Again, I'm going to bet opposite of what most people think. So let's take a look at the flip side. How have NFL teams done back-to-back -back road games? Again, I went back to 2019. Not wow numbers, but take a look. Every one of those numbers is above 51.4% or higher. In the last five years, playing teams on the second of back-to-back -back road games, you've gone 52.5%. Again, Nothing you're going to base a play on, 
But again, don't undervalue those teams. But when I did break down some subsets, I did find some interesting situations. When the team is playing their second game and they're a way favorite of six or more, they've only covered 42.9%. When the team is an away dog on a second straight road game of six or more, they've covered 45.5%. When you've gone on the road and playing a team similarly talented to you with the lines from minus five and a half to plus five and a half going through zero, teams on a second straight road game are 120 and 86 against the spread. That is a number you could pay attention to. It is 58.3% ATS. I love it. Ralph Michael's going to bring us all of those trends and angles this football season. Thank you to Ralph. Make sure you guys are giving him a follow at Cal Sports LV on all your social channels. He's going to get that Instagram back going by him. I mean me. And now the guy who's great at Instagram. So I'm going to give him a big shout out. I never have to yell at Andy about his Instagram posts. Andy Lang coming in hot for some prop shop. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, Marco and Teddy think a reel is something on the end of a fishing pole. Uh, we all know what a reel is on, on Instagram. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's talk about Derrick Henry and the AFC future uh, play. I've run this prop by a few people, Kelly, and nobody likes it, which makes me like it even more. Uh, let's take Derrick Henry under 975 and a half yards rushing. So he moves over to the Baltimore Ravens in Derrick Henry has been Mr. Reliable in fantasy football. Everyone knows this. I think this might be the year where he pulls back. I think he's going to be great with his touchdowns, but his yards, I'm not so sure. So we look at what happened with Tennessee last year, and I know it's a completely different team. But Kelly, he only averaged 4.2 yards per carry. That's his lowest since 2017. He played 17 games, 280 carries. That's a lot. 2022, played 16 games, 349 carries. Even in 2021, 219 carries and only eight games played. So this guy's a lot of wear and tear, and he's not really, really disappointed. And I think this is the year that the yards come down, and here's why. The Baltimore Ravens, they just don't use their running backs a lot. Uh, they use them around the goal line, but not in the middle of the field. That's kind of Lamar Jackson's rushing. This is going to surprise everybody. The Baltimore Ravens have not had a running back go over this rushing total since 2000. 15. You're looking at a decade of, of, of Baltimore Ravens that have not gone over uh, this rushing total. So when I'm looking at this, uh, this Baltimore Ravens team, uh, you have to go back to uh, Mark Ingram and to, to find a guy that rushed over, over this total, Kelly. So I think Derrick Henry's real value is going to be inside the five-yard line. They don't like to run Lamar Jackson inside the five but they are going to use this beast of, of Derrick Henry to score a lot of touchdowns. I'm going under 975 and a half rushing yards as the AFC best bet. I know I'm getting it. I know I've, I've already gotten a lot of pushback, but again, Kelly, contrarian is sometimes a really, really good place to go. Let's take the under on Derrick Henry. I always love a good contrarian play at Andy Lang bets on Instagram. If you guys are looking to give him a follow at bump sports over there on Twitter. Thank you to Andy. We cannot wait for your contributions this fall. Let's bring back in Marco and Teddy. We're going to break down the AFC North and of course the AFC South. So we're going to go North first here, Marco. I'm going to pull up these odds because I want to make sure I'm correct. And up to date, the Bengals are the front runner right behind the Ravens at about five cents more. The Cleveland Browns looking around six to one. And then shockingly, the Pittsburgh Steelers right behind. Lots of love for the Cleveland Browns again this year from at least uh, those audience members, as uh, Andy liked to say, chirping a lot. I'm hearing a lot of Cleveland Browns chatter. Is that because maybe the Bengals are a little overhyped with a off and on injured Joe Burrow, maybe the Baltimore Ravens aren't as good as we thought they were, Marco? Kelly, this is the best division in football. I alluded to it earlier that there was one, and it's from top to bottom. You know, I said the AFC East is good because the top three were so good, but you have New England there. Here, you've got four legitimate teams. And what's going to end up happening? I think they're going to end up beating one another up. Now, Baltimore, they're there every year, unless Lamar Jackson gets hurt. And that's always a big if. When you've got a quarterback that likes to run the football the way Lamar Jackson does, you always have to hold your breath. 
Same can be said the last two years with Joe Burrow. Um, he's been injured and not finished the season or missed significant time. If he's healthy, I think Cincinnati is the favorite to win the division. I know there's a lot of concerns about the defense, but Kelly, think about it. That defense had to be on the field a lot last year because the offense wasn't as good as it was with Joe Burrow. It can't be. You know, Browning did a, you know, a good job coming in for Burrow and still uh, managed to win games, but the offense didn't click the way it did before. And when you're not on the field offensively for long periods of time, the defense is getting more plays. And the more plays the defense plays, the more yards they're going to give up. I think you'll see an improvement this year from Cincinnati in that department. Now, the Cleveland Browns. Talk about Kool-Aid, and every year they're serving it up with the Cleveland Browns. There's always hype for this team. But I got to tell you, roster-wise, this is a team that is a playoff contender. This is a team that somehow last year managed to find a way to get to the playoffs with Joe Flacco. They literally pulled him off his couch uh, when Deshaun Watson went down and the Browns had nobody that could get the job done in camp. And he had a flash in the pan for a few games, carried the team. They scored a lot of points. If Deshaun Watson ever lives up to any part of the contract he signed, this is a team that could win the division. I think the play with the Browns is over the season win total. It's really put up or shut up time for Deshaun Watson. Uh, first year, we know what happened. He had the suspension and was playing catch up the entire year. Last year had the shoulder injury. He's coming into this season. He's cleared to play um, last week. Uh, they held him out of the preseason game, but he's cleared for full contact now. He should get some reps and be ready for the start of the season. I think that's the sleeper in this division. And then there's the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know what, Kelly? I'm going to tease it by saying I'm going to save my breakdown of the Steelers till the best bet segment. Is I've got a lot to say about my Steelers. Oh, boy. Teddy covers. Marco thinks he's getting off easy by alluding that we have to wait to the best bet. So that means you get to tell me what you think about Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Who is going to be the quarterback for this Steelers team? And how on earth are they going to keep Mike Tomlin's win streak alive? How are they going to keep it alive? They're, I mean, Pittsburgh on paper is a decent team. The problem that Pittsburgh has is a schedule, as do all the teams in this division have a pretty brutal schedule. The AFC North opponents face AFC West and NFC East teams, and that's uh, tough. And obviously, if you finished in the top part of this division, you're also facing elite teams based on a first or second place schedule. Pittsburgh doesn't have that. And Tomlin's long-term track record tells us that we better give him credit every year. For how many, it's been years now they've been telling us, oh, this is the year that Tomlin goes under 500. This is the year that Tomlin, I heard that literally. I mean, if I had, if I had a nickel for every time I heard it for the last five years, I'd have at least five nickels. Uh, so that's worth a quarter. Uh, that being said, uh, I don't think that Pittsburgh is primed for a major decline. I think they're every bit as good, perhaps better. And I think if you ask me who the two quarterbacks is the better for the Steelers moving forward, I don't think it's close. Okay, Russell Wilson, what, he practiced one time so far. He missed the game last week. Justin Fields, who showed flashes in Chicago. The biggest issue with Justin Fields was that he ran an offense, didn't have any open receivers, and he held the football too long. We saw some of that in the preseason opener last week. But you ask me who's going to be the quarterback of this team, let's say November 1st, I got my money on Fields. Uh, over a washed up Russell Wilson. I think that's good news for the Steelers, not bad news. We talk about teams that I'm interested in in this division. The Baltimore Ravens stand out to me uh, as a team. You know, Lamar Jackson is coming off an MVP season. Again, second time in five years. He's 58 and 19 as a regular season starter. The Baltimore has been to the playoffs five of the last six years. All right. Last year, 31 takeaways on defense. Tied for number one in the NFL, plus 12 turnover margin, tied for number one. Last year, the first defense in NFL history, the history of the NFL, to lead the league in sacks, points allowed, and takeaways in the same season. So we had a quarterback who was an MVP. We had a defense that set all kinds of records. Can they do it again? I see the only way to go for Baltimore is down. And when you lose three or five starting offensive linemen, 
when you lose Patrick Queen and Geno Stone and Jadavion Clowney on the defense side of the football, when you lose your defensive coordinator and now have a first-year, first-time coordinator uh, in Zach Orr, I see regression for the Ravens. You can bet them under the season win total, or you can get them at not to make the playoffs at better than two-to-one odds. I think both of those are worth a look. Ooh, Ariel Epstein is not going to like that one, Teddy. <laughs> Let's talk some AFC South. We've got the Houston Texans. Speaking of Kool-Aid, I love me some C.J. Stroud, but we'll get to that at the end of the show for the Best Bet segment. Jacksonville batting second here. Colts not far behind. And, of course, the Derrick henry list. Will Levis-led Titans looking like 10-1 to 1 pretty much across the market. Teddy, AFC South, give me some thoughts. So this division is fascinating. It really is. Houston on paper is Super Bowl worthy. Okay. They, they, I mean, they absolutely look loaded. And yet last year at this time, we were talking about the Texans as being a contender for the worst record in the league. So it tells us that when a team catches lightning in a bottle at the quarterback position, they got a major coaching upgrade and the draft pans out really well for them. You can turn a bad-looking season and a bad-looking roster and a bad-looking franchise, you can turn it around in a hurry. Tennessee has that potential this year, okay? I'm not saying they will. I'm saying they have the potential. And what I'm looking for in this division more than anything else is upside. Houston is priced correctly in the betting markets. Jacksonville as a contender is priced correctly in the betting markets. But the Titans and the Colts, I'm not going to call them afterthoughts in the divisions. I think there's upside potentially with both of those two teams Indy's got some expectation. You know, their line is a 500 squad. And I think they have the potential to be better than that. You know, when you talk about a, an offense with Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor both healthy and a line that's strong, it's dynamic. But I have a lot of questions about the Colts' defense. I'm not convinced they're going to be able to get stops in the fourth quarter of any game. Tennessee, no expectations, no betting market love, new head coach, young quarterback, it's not a team that's getting any hype. You know, jettisoning veterans, Derrick Henry. We just heard Marco talk about Derrick Henry being gone. I think the Titans are a lot better than they were last year. Um, there's hope for Tennessee, and maybe Tennessee over is a bet worth considering in the AFC South. That's interesting, Teddy. I When uh, Andy was saying that, I was thinking, man, I'm hearing nothing about the Titans. And all you think about is now they've lost their best running back. That's going to be one that maybe I should go back and revisit. Marco D'Angelo, let's hear your thoughts on this Tennessee Titans. Do you think that sometimes the teams that are not being talked about at all hold some sort of, uh, we'll call it value, even though that's not the right terminology? Well, in this division, yeah, that seems to be the case. Uh, I remember last year when we're sitting here in August, there wasn't anybody that didn't think it was a slam dunk. Jacksonville was going to run away with the division. Uh, in That's the wrong. AFC South. I gave out the under season <laughs> wins on this same show. Excuse me. Someone like to fact check Marco. Okay. All right. Well, you, you were in the minority, Kelly, with that one. But, you know, we'll talk about what happened to Jacksonville last year. My thing with Tennessee is, Kelly, I saw too much of Will Levis at Kentucky. Okay. Uh, I am just not convinced that he is going to be the savior there in Tennessee. I know uh, they moved on, you know, from Tannehill and, you know, gave the job to him. They got my old Steeler retread down there. Mason Rudolph will be, you know, sitting, waiting in the wings if things go bad. But, you know, now you take away their, you know, that running back, that horse that you could just saddle up and ride it that helps any quarterback especially a young quarterback when you have a guy that can you know carry the rock the way Derrick Henry did for so many years I'm not quite sold on the Tennessee Titans I think they're priced about where they should be the team that I think might be a little bit overpriced is the Houston Texans they are the flavor of the month C.J. Stroud, what a rookie season he had last year. And give him all the credit in the world. I didn't see that coming from him. You know, when was the last time we saw an Ohio State quarterback make the transformation into the NFL and be successful? Well, he sure did that last year. But will he do it for a second year? You know, there's always the adage, okay, now we got a season of game film on him. Now we got a chance to properly game plan for him. Uh, seeing what his tendencies were, what his strengths and weaknesses were. There really weren't a lot of weaknesses. 
but I still look at this Houston team, and they did all the th right things in the offseason. In today's football, what you have to do is when you've got a good quarterback that's on that rookie court contract, you got to go out and spend that excess money that you got lying around for other pieces, and they did that. They went out and got Diggs as a wide receiver. Now, Diggs, when his head is screwed on straight and is a team player, is one of the best in the NFL. But, you know, at some point, you know, he'll go off the rails. But it's new season, new team, should be okay for a while. They also made uh, addition in uh, impact pass rusher on defense, spent some money there. This is a team that's poised to get there, but I think they're overpriced. I think the value is in Jacksonville. This is a team that was supposed to get there last year. A lot of people put their money down on them and got burned. So there's a little bad taste in her mouth. Let's remember that this team was still there. As, you know, they got off to the slow start, but they were still there until Trevor Lawrence had that high ankle sprain late in the season. And then, you know, he didn't miss any games, but he wasn't the same quarterback down the stretch after the ankle sprain. I think they bounce back this year. My value with them is I'm going to go under the season total wins with Houston, and I'm going to take Jacksonville to win the division. Just last year, they were a heavy favorite. Now you can get them plus money and at a significant price. I'll take Jacksonville to win the AFC South. What a perfect transition uh, into the best bet segment. So thank you, Marco, for doing half of my job for me in explaining why we're both betting against the Houston Texans in this division this season. I'm going to pivot a little differently, though. Uh, I agree with you. Jacksonville is not getting very much love. I did bet that under last year, and I did benefit um, from an injury. I will say that. But this season, Jacksonville faces the second toughest schedule in the league as far as the first half of the season goes. Actually, the first 13 weeks. Eight of their 12 games are against teams that made the playoffs in 2023. So that is actually why I disagree with you on Jacksonville. And I'm going to go back to a team that burned me week one last year. Marco, it was so painful. I can't even begin to tell you. The, the Colts, if you guys remember, I took them against Jacksonville in week one. And it was so bad that Anthony Richardson put his life on the line and the cover did not happen. Thank you, Gardner Minshew. That being said, I really like Shane Steichen and what he has done with this team. As they mentioned, Gardner Minshew made him look elite. Well, that's because of the running game. Steichen has got this team off to a fast start all season long last year by sticking with the run. And if Anthony Richardson does not try to injure himself again, I think we are going to see the guy that showed moments and beautiful flashes at Florida. Now, I know a lot of people are going to, what, at Florida? Well, I started following the Florida Gators a lot more once I moved down here. And Anthony Richardson is a good quarterback. The problem was he inherited a uh, Billy Napier, not very good Florida team. But this kid can play. He is dynamic. And I think he will take a step forward this season, which will help open up this Indianapolis offense, which is why I like this team plus 300 to win the AFC South. Marco D'Angelo, give me your best bet for the AFC this season. Well, Kelly, I might not be able to go visit Pittsburgh this year <laughs> because I am going to be a hated man. Mike Tomlin's streak comes to an end of never having a losing season with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going under the season win total of eight and a half. And why? Don't give me the hate, Pittsburgh. Give the hate to the NFL schedule makers. And I'm going to start on November 17th on the schedule. The Steelers play their hated rival, the Baltimore Ravens. If you've ever been to one of these games, you know those games are absolute wars as these teams hate one another and they bang on each other for a full 60 minutes. What happens to the Steelers after that game? Well, four days later, they got to play their second fiercest rival, the Cleveland Browns, on a Thursday night. So you're coming off that physical game against Baltimore on Sunday and then play a Thursday night game on the road against your second rival. Oh, does it get any better after that? 
Mm, no, because then they have to play Cincinnati the next week on the road. That's three division games in a row in late November. After that, they come home and play Cleveland for a second time in three weeks. That won't be fun. Followed up by a trip to Philadelphia on the road. Hmm, another playoff team. Then they play Baltimore a second time on the road. That's four road games in five weeks. And all of them but one a division game. Oh, and after that war against Baltimore, another physical game, they play on a short week again, Christmas Day, against the Kansas City Chiefs. What the, you know what is going on here with the schedule? And then they finish up at home against Cincinnati. The end of the schedule does them in. They don't get to eight and a half wins. Take the under is my best bet. Wow, the resident Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I remember texting him when they traded for Russell Wilson, and he goes, it's a buy low spot. Kelly, thanks for the Broncos for paying most of his salary. Now joke's on you, Marco, whether he's your starting quarterback or not. <laughs> Teddy, give me your best bet. I, I, I'm, I'm anticipating this one. I saw this uh, in the Slack earlier, and Teddy said, oh, Kelly's going to have a field day with this one. So it's not a bet that I normally make. If we're talking about putting money down now for a bet that's not going to cash all year, I want to give you guys something of a long shot. And that long shot is Aaron Rodgers to win MVP at 25 to 1. I think the price is very reasonable for an MVP. Let's start with this concept. Who wins MVPs? Quarterbacks. Since LaDainian Tomlinson won in 2006, there's been one non-quarterback winning the award. So it's going to be a quarterback. It's likely to be a quarterback. 90 plus percent chance it'll be a QB. It's also likely to be a team that's one of the top two seats. The last 19 years, 15 times, it's been a number of a team that had a number one seed, one MVP, and 17 times it's been a one or a two seed in the last 19 years. So what we're looking for is a quarterback on a team that's likely to be a number one or two seed, that has a good chance to be a number one or two seed. Well, the Jets are live, man. The Jets are really live. Aaron Rodgers, obviously a four-time winner, playing in a major media market. He has six national TV games in the first 11 weeks of the season. It's not like Aaron Rodgers is going to get hype. So if he has a good year, everyone's going to hear about it. The Jets' defense has been top two in the league each of the last two years and looks every bit as good on paper this year. The Jets' offense was 31st or 32nd in the league last year. And in theory should be a hell of a lot better this year. Every move the Jets have made, win now, win this year. When you have a 40-year-old quarterback coming off an Achilles, those are the moves you make. Wide receiving core loaded. Offensive line loaded. They have a running game. Again, is this bet going to win every time? No. But we're getting, if you shop around, right now you can find 25-1 to 1 on Aaron Rodgers to win MVP. And I think that's a better bet than Jets to win the division. I think it's a better bet than... Jets go over their season win total, 25 to 1 on Rodgers for MVP. For a guy who's live if they're good, it's a bet worth taking. There you have it, Kill. I love it. I love it. I love it. What a great preview show, guys. We will be back, obviously. College football week one, NFL week one, and of course next week with an NFC preview show as well. My name is Kelly Stewart at Kelly in Vegas, Marco D'Angelo at Marco in Vegas, Teddy Covers at Teddy underscore covers. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you hit that like button, drop a comment, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. Let us know how we're doing and let's cash some tickets this season.